We have a question already? Gertrude Texan has a question. any of you. 
in that, that way. I'd be glad to uh, give you this little, this little recognition of you being an echo. You have to have a calligraphic hand to write it in, and I have a reasonably good one. So uh, if you'll come around home, I can uh, make you an echo, or perhaps in, in a few years we'll have another meeting like this, and I'll bring along <laughs> the echo, and the echo sheets, and uh, I'm sure probably all of you will want it, and that would be simply great. That would be, for you, would be the life. Have I answered what an echo is properly there? Yes. yes. Yeah. 
if you, uh, we talk often in church, and you grew up in North Carolina, and my yeah. question is, when you came to New York, what are some of the things that, what are some of the things that were most significant that struck you the most coming to a big city from, uh, coming from uh, Salem? Well, of course, what struck me most was that my girl was in training at the Presbyterian Hospital. That was the most important thing about coming to New York. <laughs> Right. 
fermentation. I'll tell you one story which illustrates that. Uh, after the war, Dot and I were, were given the tickets to a dance at the uh, Sleepy Hollow Country Club in, in Tarrytown. And, uh, and uh, uh, the time came to give out uh, prizes or something or other. Uh, there had been, had been the tickets given to all, all the, the ladies and, and the thing. And uh, the man got up to read out, out, out the winners of, of certain prizes. And he pulled out the first one, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Audrey uh, 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 Vanderbilt of, of uh, uh, Helmsford, Mrs. So-and-so of, of, uh, of a Sleepy Hollow, Mrs. Edward Ron Toller of of a tarot town. <laughs> <laughs> you could not say Croton in the Sleepy Hollow country, but uh, it, it just it just it couldn't be done. So um, and uh, and um, I never knew too much about that. That really, we had friends up on Mount Airy, wonderful friends, and we went up there there to visit them from time to time and everything. But but as as many of you know, Mount Airy at that time uh, was was a questionable place, which of course had long vanished long 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 ago. Uh, does that answer whoever asked this question? But 
that was the way it was with those old cars. You, you know, were always repairing your tires. And we drove all over Westchester looking for, because it had to be Westchester. You see, my work was on East 45th Street uh, between, uh, between 3rd and 2nd Avenue on 45th, the south side, 216. And uh, uh, we drove everywhere looking for a place in Westchester, but all the houses cost so much. Uh, they, they were all oh, 11, 12, and even $13,000. Uh, uh, was just out of the question. And, uh, and finally, I was walking across 40, Fifth Street one time, and uh, happened to run into Bill Shirley, whom I had known as a boy, even a little older than I. My brother, my older brother, was uh, friends with Bill, and it couldn't be anybody but, but Bill, I was sure, and, and it was. And uh, he was an architect in New York. And I said, Bill, uh, um, we're looking for a place to move out from uh, Bay Ridge in the Westchester. Where do you suggest we go? And he said, well, I'll tell you a place that nobody looks at. <laughs> it's, 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 it has excellent commuting and, uh, and the prices are right. Croton, Croton on Hudson. So, uh, uh, Bill told us some more things about Croton and so forth. It said that it had very interesting people in it. So we drove up and, uh, and uh, <laughs> drove up old, old uh, uh, Riverside Avenue, which had ancient brick houses on it that was just terrible. Just all, and uh, we didn't go back, back in, in there. And we said, "Oh boy, this is no place we want to be." <laughs> and so we went home and kept looking at other places where houses were all too high. And uh, finally, one day, I said to Dot, "Mary, uh, why don't you look after the boys, and I'll go up. Maybe we didn't." didn't give Croton a good look at. So, so I, I, I drove up and went into uh, George Olson, who was a real estate man. Did anybody remember George Olson? Ah, oh, good, that's fine. And, uh, and uh, George, I, I told him what we needed. And uh, he said, well, you'll have to give me about 20 minutes. We're having trouble with the schools and I have to be on the phone. I should have, I should have <laughs> known what that meant, but, but uh, I didn't at the time. So then George took me around and, and showed me the house that we eventually uh, bought and it was, and, and have today. And uh, so that was how we how we moved to, to Croton because we found a house for seven thousand dollars, which was within our means, and uh, and moved up in November November 1941, just just as the war began, as as Pearl Harbor Pearl Harbor uh, came uh, about three weeks after we moved in. So we were here all during the war and everything else. Another question. Uh, yeah, no, no. What, what was your role in the development of phototype, phototopography? I know oh. You had, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. That's, uh, well, 
playing in the yard at, in, in, in the square, at, at the Salem Square. That's uh, North Carolina, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which is where I was, was brought up. I was actually born in, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, but, but uh, we moved down when my dad became president of the college in, in Winston-Salem, and I grew up there. Uh, I was only four years old when we uh, moved down, so I don't remember much about Bethlehem. Uh, now, I was, I was playing in the square there. I was, was uh, five years old, and Uncle Bob came by and said, uh, Edward, do you want to go with me to the uh, journal office? Well, I want to go anywhere with him, of course. So we went up there, and we were up in the editorial offices and I heard a rumbling going on and I said, Oh Bob, what's that that noise? And he said, We'll go see. So when he was was through, we went down into the basement and there was a great big whole press spewing out news news newspapers so fast you couldn't possibly count them. Well that, I had never seen anything so glorious as that. So Uncle Bob got the message, and uh, next uh, Christmas he, he gave me a little printing press, a boy's printing press, and, uh, and type, and I was uh, hooked for life. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, at that time, all typesetting, well, we had liner, we had automatic liner types, but but, uh, but a great deal of typesetting was hand typesetting. You, you picked up, you had a stick here that you put in, you picked a letter here, the letter out of the case with another one, and, and so forth, and set type. And then you locked it up in, in the chase, put it into the press, and, and printed it one, one at a time. And if, York and uh, and uh, um, uh, ultimately that led to Henry Fole and me. He was he he ran a you printed a newspaper. Think about about the size of of a postcard, and it took you a month to set the type to print that. But but boys printed newspapers then, and uh, and you. Uh, you sold them for a penny piece, and uh, that, uh, that was great. You got subscribers for uh, 10 cents for 10 issues, and, and there were competing newspapers. Johnny Blair had one, Henry Fole had one, and I had one, and, and we were at, it, at each other's throats, of course, because this, this was great competition. Then there was competition uh, between uh, the Winston-Salem Journal and the Twin City Sentinel. Sentinel was the afternoon paper. The Journal was was the uh, the uh, the uh, morning one. They were in strong competition, just like we were. We didn't compete. We we weren't in competition with them, but we were with each other. And uh, and. Uh, uh, Am I answering? Oh yeah, I should go ahead with this, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, on my ninth issue, I had promised the ten issues, and on my ninth issue, my press broke. I had set the type, and uh, and uh, but my the body of my press. This was a Kelsey press. Uh, broke, and uh, and I had to go to the competition to uh, borrow their their press to print print my ninth issue. Oh, uh, they agreed, provided I would uh, devote the whole front page to appreciation of their generosity. <laughs> Nothing else to do, but I did that. Well, that led to our, well, 
that summer, my dad took me to Lynchburg, Virginia, where the college, the Salem College catalog was printed. And uh, since I was a printer, he thought it'd be a good idea to take me along to see Mr. Bell there, which I did. I was really ashamed of the whole thing because I had a broken press, but I didn't tell Mr. Bell about that, that uh, because I really couldn't print any myself. But uh, we were there, and I saw this great big Bell printing company and everything. Then, about a month later, I got a postcard from the freight office saying that a package was there that, 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 that weighed 162 pounds for Edward Ronton. Well, the college, I got Charlie at the college to, to go up, to drive me up with the wagon, and uh, we went up there and loaded it on. And when I got it home and opened it up, it was five cases of, of type from the J.P. Bell Company, the type they, they were abandoned in. 36 point Elsevier and 24 point Elsevier, uh, uh, 10 and, uh, and uh, 12 point uh, uh, Ionic and, uh, and 12 point typewriter. So I had the type and Henry had the press. <laughs> so what, what else could we do but consolidate? And that was, that was the great consolidation. And our, our Sunday school teacher, we didn't know what to call the new place, and our Sunday school teacher gave us a list of 12 names. And the 11th one we liked more than any of the others. Big little print shop. <laughs> so uh, this was was the uh, the big little print shop, and uh, and uh, as we got along in high school and so forth, we began to do commercial printing. We weren't doing uh, newspaper printing. We were doing commercial, and and uh, af after high school, we were out a whole year doing commercial printing to make money for college. And, uh, and uh, we made, I think it was $2,718 that year, which was, was uh, pretty good. That, that, that would do a lot at, at uh, Chapel Hill, which was where we were headed for college. Uh, oh, you asked me how I got into, into Photographic types. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, I came up in New York and was with this this typographic house, and uh, uh, of course I wasn't allowed to set type because I I I wasn't union, but but I could design things and, and to get the type set. And at at that time. At that time, you must remember that, that um, uh, advertising agencies wanted their ads to look, look better than, than they did when, when uh, they, they were set by the newspaper or the magazine. The newspaper or magazine would set your ad free, but it looked awful. They used line of type and just sloppy work. So in New York had grown uh, um, oh, 50 or so typographic houses that, that, that catered to the advertising agencies like J. Roller Thompson and Young and Rupert and BBDNO and all of those. Uh, uh, and to, uh, to uh, magazines uh, for headlines. Uh, like fortune and um, and uh, so forth. So uh, so uh, I got this 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 job uh, 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 as a 
assistant art director. And um, let's see. The question was, how did we begin the photographic typesetting? Was that the question? Thank you. <laughs> and and uh, um, uh, one one of our one of our accounts was uh, the General Printing Inc. Corporation, and I was down down there one day seeing their advertising. Uh, uh, manager, uh, Paul, Paul Kaufman, and uh, we were going, they, they had a subsidiary, the Rutherford Machinery Company, and we were, which had uh, lithographic machinery and, and so forth, and we were going through pictures deciding which ones uh, to use in an ad, and I saw one of, of an old, an old uh, step and repeat machine. Ashley Ogden's uh, uh, step and repeat machine. That means it would take one image and repeat it like, like, like a stamp, repeat it a hundred times, uh, one, one after the other on a plate, on, on a lithographic plate. And, uh, and, uh, and I said, what's that? And he said, "This is a, and, and it would, it was, a, it did check background. You remember checks long ago used to have a little, a little uh, design with the name of the bank repeated again and again over the whole check a thousand times or something like that. They don't do that anymore, but but they did at that at that time. And this machine did that was." made to do that, and they tried to make it uh, uh, letter the name of the bank and the other, the other lettering that had to go on it, but it, it never worked for that. So I said, what's this? And, and Paul said, well, we're getting rid of that thing. But, but I was interested, I said, could I see it? And he said, I guess so. So he arranged for me to go out to Rutherford and Looked at the machine, and it seemed to me, because I was at that time I was with with a handset typographic house. It's uh, that was always running out of type and never had the right sizes, and was borrowing from uh, one foreman would know another foreman, and he would borrow a Cap G forty eight point uh, F or Cap G. Uh, at night and send a messenger over to borrow it from a friend of his and he'd mark it down and remember to return it and the messengers were going going around Fifth, uh, uh, 45th Street all night long borrowing type and all that. And then you didn't always have the right size. So you, you would have, uh, of course you'd have all the small sizes and then 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 60, uh, 72, uh, rarely 96, and um, and uh, those are point sizes, and and uh, and here when I saw this thing, I said, good gracious, couldn't that thing be restored and improved, and, and uh, couldn't we? It would never run out of type, and uh, I I knew a little bit about lenses, and I could see that. Lenses could be made that would condense type or would stretch them and oblique the letters or even backslide. And, um, and all, all that appealed to me tremendously. And Paul, and, and I told Paul, the advertising man, about that. Uh, why couldn't this machine, rather than being dumped, uh, made into a typesetting machine? And uh, he said, well, let me talk to my uncle. Or he sent me, I guess he sent me up to his uncle, who was head of the whole thing of General Printing Aid Corporation. And, uh, and here's what made a hit with his uncle. When I, he, he was up on the 
the 18th floor of, of 100, uh, 100 uh, uh, Canal Street. And when I walked into Mr. Ullman's office, I looked out and, and saw the Aquitania at anchor up, up, up in, the, in the harbor. And I made some mention of that. And he said, it's good to see a fellow who, who knows good ships. These ink people don't know anything about travel. <laughs> so I made a hit with him right there. And uh, after, after um, three or four months, um, I got the job of, of going out to Rutherford. And along with Harold Horman, who, who was on the uh, Rutherford staff, and a wonderful person. And strangely enough, he and I are exactly the same age to the day and year. <laughs> How that happened, I don't, we didn't know that for many years. But uh, we uh, we uh, we developed this this uh, this uh, step and repeat machine into into a good uh, uh, a typesetter that would run at about the rate of slow hand set type. But but you had all sizes you could condense and expand and do many things with it. You never ran out of type and all that. We tried to sell them. I tried to sell them. Uh, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, was not successful. We sold, I sold uh, uh, well, in the end, we sold 21 of them, but they were not being run successfully. And, uh, and uh, they were going to close, the Rutherford was going to close us up. And I, I got into touch with uh, C.E. Ruxtell, who, who was head of the largest typographic house in New York, uh, and uh, brought him over to see see this machine that we had. He looked at it and uh, I could see that he could see the future of this thing, really. And, and driving him back at the entrance to the Holland Tunnel, he said, there's one problem about this. Uh, uh, getting the right person to operate. Do you know anybody that might be? I said, yes. I know two and probably four. We had two assistants. And he got the point. And uh, so he said, well, I'll ask the board. So he asked the uh, electrographic board, and, and uh, uh, they agreed that they ought to set up a separate, a separate division, Photo Lettering Incorporated. And, uh, and, uh, uh, but they wanted it at the beginning to be secret. So they arranged to have, we got two machines, and they arranged to have them are brought in on uh, the Saturday that the World Series was being played between the, uh, the Giants and the Yankees. So 45th Street would be dead empty, <laughs> absolutely empty. We brought them in, we, uh, we had made the dark room and everything else ahead of time and, and set things up. And, and our, our two assistants, Steve Kopeck and Julian DeWitt, I talked to Steve just, just last week, he isn't at all well. He couldn't talk over the telephone, but I talked to his wife. And, uh, and that, that, that was how, how it began. And uh, we began doing headlines for uh, for advertising agencies, and uh, because it it wasn't good for a body copy, but we did headlines. Now, of course, you've got computers and digital type and all that kind of wonderful thing. But we did over the years. Um, um, we. Uh, we designed Harold Horman. He was a designer. I, I'm, I'm not a type designer, but, but Harold is, is, was a very good artist. And uh, uh, between Harold and many other designers <coughs> who uh, who came letterers who came in with designs, we over the years, over, over the 61 years the place operated. Uh, uh, 
accumulated uh, almost 10,000 different, uh, different uh, what you call type fishes. And they are now with, uh, in the Delaware, anybody know Hand Industries? Does that make, does that click with anybody here? No. All right, well, it's, it's a very good place. It's, it's run by about uh, half a dozen artists, and uh, they know lettering, and, and uh, they now have all, all these alphabets. So, and they will eventually get many of them that were converted to, uh, to a digital, and they will be available to you on your, your computer. Did I answer the question? I you sure did. Ed, <laughs> Ed, you uh, called me on the phone the other day and said, Carl, make sure to ask me the Washington, to tell the Washington Capitol story. The Washington? Capitol story. I didn't get the second word. Washington Capitol Cap story. story. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, I certainly have to tell you that. I think we've got about 10 minutes in. All right. A few more questions.
find winding stairs, uh, well, just as high as I could, right, right under the statue of the Indian that is over there, and scratch D M R <laughs> Dorothy May Reed. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's up there today. I hope it is. <laughs> but uh, but when, I, when I saw the Capitol, uh, was it last night in the celebration, uh, uh, I thought, DMR is up there now. <laughs> uh, uh, Any other questions from the audience? Anyone else? Anybody else? else? I just have one. Oh, go ahead, Ken, please. Yeah, uh, we, we all well know the, the upside of the digital revolution. If, if you could characterize the downside uh, as someone who's witnessed the whole technological evolution. The downside of the, of the uh, typographic revolution? Of the, the, the digital revolution. Of the digital revolution. Oh, of the digital, oh. I don't know what the downside is. No, I'm, I'm using digital all the time. I, uh, no, I, um, no, I think, I, I think, I think digital, digital typesetting is wonderful. Absolutely. I, I don't see any downside to, to it. Uh, I really don't. It's in good hands, and uh, and I'm I'm uh, I uh, I uh, I really think we're 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 going in the right direction. What do you think, Elton? <laughs> Elton is the guy who really knows yeah. things about now our direction. Everybody, now everybody does it, so it's hard. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Well, what about the people who misuse it? With Facebook. There are. What about the people who misuse it? Oh, the designers, well, not the players, well, I'll the tell designers. You, I'll tell you. I, uh, I'm sure there are those who 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 are misusing, but I'm I'm surprised that the protein caring committee, which you would think would be the last place in the world to have any any taste at all, photographic taste, uh, gets out a very nice announcement of their affairs. And uh, and I uh, I really I I really uh, perhaps you you all run into some bad work. I don't get much 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 uh, printed matter, but uh, but uh, I've been surprised that I, I, I really have to use the Croton Caring Committee. Do you know about the Croton Caring Committee? Not everybody does. Let me tell you yes. about it. It's, uh, well, this is Ann, Ann Kennedy's idea, and, and uh, well, I can best do that in song. <laughs> uh, if you've never heard of the CCC that wipes away all gloom, it's the special pet of Aunt Kennedy with treats in the whitewash room. If you've never had a <laughs> knock on the door with smiles at 12 o'clock, filling your tongue Driven to the dark. When you're old and gray, it'll make your day and give you exuberance. If you're laid up sick, it'll be there quick with her medics and the ambulance. Hooray, hooray, sing it again.
together to sing Ed Happy Birthday again, which is coming up when? About a week, Ed? Yeah, I think it is. But really, you don't have birthdays after Mother's Day. But do we, can we sing anyway? You'll sing with us. All right, I'll Let's sing Happy Birthday. In fact, lead the way. Lead the way. Everybody has Marion. Yeah, come on over here. 